Hello, it's Lee, and I wanted to share with you my day trading or scalping screen on TD Ameritrade. Uh, I'm just going to show you my setup and share with you my indicators if you want to use them. Okay, so the premise here is that recently I've been doing a lot of scalping on SPX and SPY and doing, I don't know, high frequency trades. Um, maybe like a hundred trades a day and taking advantage of a lot of small moves in the market and making some money doing it so let me show you what's on my screen here this is this is my basic setup and I want to I want to show you what I'm looking at and why I'm looking at it so let's look at the uh, top half of the screen let's go let's look at the top right we'll open this window up just a little bit bigger um, this window is called the ad line or the uh, advanced declines. This is everything on the New York Stock Exchange and it tells me the quantity of stocks that are going up for the day or above zero for the day and the quantity of stocks that are below zero for the day. So let me just change this to like um, 20 day, one hour. Um, let's do this, make it so I can get it all the way over to the edge okay so what you can see is yeah that's not a great view let's go with um, 20 days 10 minutes let's try that out what you can see is that there's a lot of choppy days and there's a lot of trend days like if you were to look at let's pick let's pick a nice trend day this one right here you can see that the market was trending up for most of the day. This is the in, this is the entire New York Stock Exchange. You can see that on this following day, the market trended down and then it kind of ranged all day. Here on this day, you can see that uh, this was a half day, by the way. We can see that the market trended up and then got choppy. And you can get a feel for what the market's doing by looking at the advances and decliners. Um, this white line I drew. Um, I just I just go over here and you can click the button that says price level there it is and you can drop in a price level I dro dropped in a price level at zero I dropped another one in at what is this this is at 1200 I got one at negative 1200 one at 2000 and one at negative 2000 so I can just have a feel for what the general direction of the market is and I like to keep this on a um, on a uh, kind of a shorter time frame. I like to look at it on three day, one minute. And if we look at yesterday, for instance, we can see that the market opened up way down. Um, let's see, the vast majority of stocks, let's say 1900 of them more were down than up. They rallied a little bit, some were up, came back down. And for the second half of the day, we can see that the market moved in an upward direction as a whole. Um, it still stayed uh, as a bad day, you know, negative 1200 on the advanced decline line. That's, uh, that's still a bearish day, but you can see that there was a bullish move towards the second half of the day. So that's the advanced decliners. Now, the one on the left, I use in a very, very similar way. This is the VOLD, dollar sign V-O-L-D. Um, it's instead of the number of advancers and decliners, it's the volume of advancers and decliners. So what happens is you, you get a different view, but it's still more or less the, the trend for the day. We can look at this day and what we're talking about is how much volume traded below the zero line versus above the zero line. So you can see on this particular day, the market was trading all day below the line and as the volume built up and built up and built up we can see that the day just went on and on below the line so um, again on this one I have a center line as a zero you can look at multiple days here's 10 days and you can see that there's you know choppy days and then there's trending days this these days the market stayed down these days the market was kind of all over the place so you can get a real feel for what the market is doing based on the vault and the ad line um, 
So I use those to kind of, let's call it, take the temperature of the market so I can have a, a general feeling of the trend for today or the last couple of days. What's, what's the market doing? Which direction is it going and why? Okay, so now let's take a, uh, a look at this guy on the left over here. This is the tick. I don't know if you've ever used the tick before. It's a dollar sign T-I-C-K, and I have it set right now to one minute. And what I can see is, uh, this again, again is on the New York Stock Exchange, I can see if the market is ticking one direction or the other. So what, what you can see, let's pick a point here. Um, let me show you my lines. This one is a zero line. This one's a positive 750 and a negative 750 and a positive 12 and a negative 12. And what I did was I used these lines to see how much the market is ticking to one direction or the other. And now this is, this is across the entire New York Stock Exchange. Are they ticking up or are they ticking down? If you have one stock that's ticking up and another stock that's ticking down, they cancel each other out and you get a zero. But if you have 750 more stocks ticking up than ticking down, that's kind of a, a bullish um, time in the market. So when I can see that this thing is ticking, 750 is ticking, um, I know that the market's going to be moving in a bullish direction. Now, there are some stocks that are more heavily weighted than other stocks, so sometimes it doesn't tick as much as you would think it would, but I know that if this line in general is above zero, the market is going to be ticking upward in a bullish direction, and if it's below zero, it's going to be ticking downward. And this is this is kind of a predictor too, because when it's when it's ticking, it's not telling you what the price is; it's telling you which direction the price action is. And the next tick is probably going to be more or less the same. If it's at negative 500 for a tick, the next tick is going to be more or less negative 500 and sometimes it will um, you can see the oversold or undersold or overbought in the tick and you can see that it acts a little bit like an oscillator it jumps up to 750 and comes back down there's no there's no magic lines here there's nothing special about 750 it just happens to be that the that's a number where the market um, tends to be overbought and down here it tends to be oversold but it, it can stay there for a while so um, on the bottom is this accumulator this is an indicator that I wrote um, somebody else was selling an indicator that that looked a lot like this and I liked it but I didn't feel like paying for it so I just wrote it up real quick and what this does is you can see these dotted lines right here and here's another dotted line that's that's the new day so that's the daybreak and you can see that this indicator starts at zero for the day and what it does is it shows me a sum of all of the ticks so far that day so i can see that the that this thing is ticking below zero all day and and the the entire day it ticked below zero so some days uh, excuse me, the accumulation was below zero. So you can see that in the afternoon it was ticking up, so this accumulation was heading towards zero to be more of a neutral day, but, you know, the accumulation was generally red. Um, and the direction of this line tells you a, a lot about the trends in the market and where it's going. And let me turn this into... I don't know, a 10 day line. So you can see what, what some of these look like. Um, certain buttons, I don't know how to press yet. So you can see that uh, this day, big accumulation down, big accumulation down. This day was a little bit choppy, 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 trending up. Um, and you get the point. This, this is showing me what's going on here. Now, now I like to look at it really tight and zoomed in for my scalping so I can see exactly what it's doing right now. And I will take that and I will shove it off into the corner over here where I can 
see what's going on. It doesn't take up too much of my screen, but it but it's right there. Okay, here we go. So then I got my XPX chart. So we'll make that just a little bit bigger for you to see it for now. Um, on the SPX chart, I have a couple of indicators going on. I just have the, uh, this, this is, by the way, this is a one minute chart. I have the 25 EMA in green and the 50 EMA in red. Um, I'm not doing anything magic like crossovers or anything crazy. What I'm doing is I'm looking at these lines and making a determination of whether I think the market is in a bullish trend or a bearish trend at this moment. And you can see that as um, these lines diverge, it's strengthening the bullish trend. And as they converge, it's 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 um, going more towards a, uh, a bearish trend. And you can kind of just get a feel for the current direction of the market. I'm not using that as a predictor in any way. I'm just using it to um, be a visual indication of what I think uh, the trend of the market is. Now, this, these dotted lines, over, these dots right here, this green dot and this red dot, um, they, they look like they're doing some magic here. Um, and what that is, is that that's an indicator that I made. It's called tick pressure. Um, and I'll, I'll put a link to these um, indicators below the tick accumulation in the tick pressure I'll put below in the comments so you can download them if you want to now uh, by the way if you don't know how to do it you have to go to studies and you have to add a study uh, how do you do it you just let's, let's see how we do it um, I'll hit, click edit studies and over here you would have to create a study and give it a name and copy and paste that study into here and hit apply and that's how you can copy and paste a study into your chart so um if you know how to do that there's a bunch of youtube videos on how to do that so let me tell you what this this um tick pressure does um on the left here when we look at the tick what we can see is that the tick will reach some extremes um, when it gets way up here or way down here um, we I'm gonna call those tick extremes and what I did in my indicator let's see if I can get there um, go over here I set those up as variables my up threshold for tick pressure is 500 and my down threshold is negative 600 so what happens is um, every time there's a bar where the tick is above 500, I get a green dot. And every time there's a bar where the tick closes below 600, negative 600 that is, I get a red dot. Now, they mean one of two things and you don't know which, right? It's either going to be an oversold or overbought condition and it's about to reverse, or it's an indication of a strong trend. So we can, we can use other methods to decide if it's going to be an overbought, oversold, or a strong trend. Um, and one of the things that you can do is, just for instance, you can see that um, these dots started adding up. One, two, three, four. That's that's kind of uh, showing me that there's a downward trend. And over here, these start dots started adding up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an, that's an up pretty strong upward trend but this red dot is an oversold condition and the interpretation of these dots um, <laughs> is is um, an art all by itself but the creation of the dots is in the um, in the think script that I'm providing providing below okay so uh, again I'm day trading this I'm scalping I'll show you some other junk that's on my chart and it's junk there's a lot of lines here and this is what did i do i switched to a 10 day 30 minute view and it looks like my chart is a mess there's all this stuff on here and you know let me switch over to the one day one year and when you look at it these are just trend lines and levels of support and resistance and um <clears throat> 
when you look at it on the one day view, these, these lines are completely meaningless. But when you go into the three day, one minute view, they start to become areas of support and resistance. And you can trade those using your price action trading methodologies. Um, there you go. That, that's pretty much it. Sometimes when I, I'll switch over to SPY and I'll turn on level two, um, level two quotes, and that gives me a little bit of extra information, but we'll save that for another day. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a like and subscribe, and you can go into the comments to or the description actually to download these um, two think scripts. Um, Enjoy. Bye-bye.